You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, hi, Ryan. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Good. Did you have a good week? Did. Good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this could go on. People were like, all right, and unsubscribe. Uh, first, I want to say um, that, uh, as you know, in love with Michael Rosenbaum, Chris Sullivan is no longer... We let it go. I thank you for any of you who listened to it and supported it. Um, there were reasons. Chris Sullivan's wife is pregnant. Uh, it's a far drive for him. And uh, there weren't many listeners and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> but I had a good time doing it. I really enjoyed it. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So it's one of those things where, you know, if it doesn't quite work out, you, you move on. And you you learn from it. But I'm still doing this podcast inside of you because I love it. And I love you guys. And I appreciate, you know, I just went to Portland, Ryan. Mm -hmm. so How I was it? It was great. I, I, you know, I do the cons and people come up to me. It's probably more than ever now. They just, uh, you know, they have their stories and people are like they join Patreon. By the way, thank you for joining Patreon and becoming my patrons. And I, and I think we're doing a great job. Bryce and I are doing a great job of giving you guys extra footage. And, you know, I'm always responding to you as much as I can. And, you know, we do Q and A's and it just, there's so much stuff we're, we're throwing out there and I hope it's worth your while and you're having fun. If you have any ideas, uh, keep them to yourself. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, I hope you're enjoying it. And I really, really, truly appreciate the the support there on Patreon. But uh, the podcast, when I go to cons, people are just, uh, I, you know, people, it, it affects their lives. It's cool, you know? And so sometimes I'm thinking, I'm getting too serious in, the, in these interviews. And then I'm like, but I like talking about serious stuff. I like talking about stuff that sometimes people are uncomfortable talking about. So I'm going to keep doing it. And if you get bored, then hopefully you won't. Stop subscribing. But I don't think they're boring. They're fun. Yeah, they're really interesting. Yeah. I mean, you learn a lot. I'm learning. I'm, I think other people are learning. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that the whole point of it? You learn and it's not just your typical freaking interview. It's, yeah. uh, I mean, look, by the way, I'm a constant work in progress. I mean, I, ha I was having anxiety this last weekend. I breathe through it. I try to meditate. I just acknowledge it like, hey, this is happening. Uh, it's not going to kill me. I'm healthy. I'm not having a heart attack. You're doing okay, kid. I just said kid because I'm looking at the Karate Kid poster across from me. But uh, so again, thank you for listening. Subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Uh, I'll be in Richmond uh, for a con. Look it up. It'll probably be on my Twitter and Instagram soon. I'm also going to be in Mexico in March. Um, and there's more coming this summer. We do Smallville Nights with Tom. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you need to come see it because you're going to really enjoy it. We do about an hour, hour and a half of improv and read scenes and People really seem to respond. Uh, what else? Catherine McNamara episode was great last week. Yeah. It was really great. And um, she, she's sweet to talk to. She's uh, she's a busy girl. She loves to work. She's really busy. <laughs> she is busy. And she's really, there's not a lot of negative things in her life. So it was kind of like, you know, you're trying to get something like, hey, come on. Did you did you stub your toe today? What did you do? But she's, uh, she's full of, I think that's just as important as, he as hearing people who are, you know, tell you about their problems and things like that. It's just as important to hear the good things that there are in life and how to appreciate them. And I think that's what she does. So I think that's that's important. Um, our transition to video is getting closer and closer. So uh, remember, it's a learning curve. So when you see it, please share it with everybody. Subscribe to the YouTube inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, Ryan here is the uh, is doing his best. Be to nice piece to them together. He's he's learning, uh, <laughs> although he does this for a living. So. I do know how to do this. You but. son of a bitch. <laughs> um, it should be great. Yeah. It will be. And uh, also, if you want any Inside of You merch or Left on Laurel merch from the band, it's all on the Inside of You store. So if you go to insideofyoustore.com or whatever, you'll see it. It's on my link or whatever. And uh, the music is free um, on Spotify and everywhere else. So thank you so much for everything. Today's episode, you know, I was going to wait to air this because uh, you'll hear about this in the podcast, but Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings are here today. It's just really fun to watch them sort of bounce off each other because Billy is more of the, you know, he's the shy guy a little bit. You know, he's the, he's a family guy. He's uh, he's very bright. And not that Dom isn't. Tom's obviously bright, much brighter than me. But uh, watching them, their friendship, you could see they've been friends for a long time and how they became friends and how it sort of evolved and all the great stories. One of my favorite stories was the, uh, the fight, the fist fight that uh, Dominic and Monaghan and... Uh, Orlando Bloom almost got into. Oh Did you like that? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, of course. That was intense. I love Lord of the Rings. It was great to like sit there and listen to all the stories. Yeah, 
just just hanging out yeah for years for years you know talk about their tattoos when they got tattoos there's so many great stories in here and there's a i'm not going to even give it away now but there's something you'll want to hear when you listen to it something they're doing they're working on together uh you'll have to listen to the podcast and uh, i think you'll get a real kick out of it i'm looking really forward to this but they're two exceptional guys i loved having them here in my house and they recorded something at my house they used my engineer, Ryan. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say what it was, but maybe if you listen, you'll understand. And um, I think you're going to have fun with this. Let's get inside Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. This feels, because I've done this before. This, this, is how it, one, I mean. this is how it starts, and then you won't hear a fucking word That's from true. me. Is that it's what happens? Oh, Dom. Yeah, Dom said that. Dom says, you know, you're a gentleman, you're, you, you, you're a little quiet, you're really funny when you're with him. Only with me. <laughs> he makes me funny. I don't know if that's true. But I do look at the both of you right now. And I know that you guys are really best friends. You're really close friends. Mm-hmm, yeah. Right? That's not a lie. No, that's not put on. I don't think you can. But so do you think the uh, the saying opposites attract is true? Do you think that like with women or men, whatever it is, friends that we're attracted to? I mean, you're attracted to him. Not sexually, maybe. Definitely with magnets. That's science. Yeah. But with people, I would say no. I think mainly you're attracted to to people who like to do the things that you like to do. What is it you like to do, Billy? I like to sleep. I like to drink coffee. I like to do very little, to be honest. See, I'm, I feel like I'm the opposite because I'm not big on those things. I'm not no. that big on sleeping. I'll have the occasional coffee to wake me up. And what was the last thing that you said? Mainly doing nothing. Oh, yeah, I do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah he I, likes I, to do stuff. Do you follow his Instagram? Yeah, he's always, you know, from wild things, he's all over the world, he's yeah. he's always doing something. He's he's interesting, and he's... Do you find that, though, Don, that you keep busy just because if you stop, you're going to... The voices get, come the in? The voices come in? Because I know that's with me, with me, you know, I, I have things going on in my life, and, you know, if I stop for a second, I start to really obsess. Yeah, and, and mine's more... I mean, I'm sure there's something to be said for that. Mine's, as I've got older... As we all get older, hopefully, you start to realize the things that work for you and the things that don't, and you tend to lean away from the bad things and go towards the good things. And if I'm just doing something that's ticking me along, like I've been doing miniature Japanese kind of Lego bricks for the past kind of I don't know what that two is. Months. So it's basically Lego, but very slim down. So the pieces can be a millimeter. You need to put them on with oh, tweezers. I couldn't do it. Like I don't have the patience. Yeah, How do so, you have the patience for that? Because and, the, and the vision. Don't you have to have really good eyesight? You probably do have slightly Because my vision. eyes are really bad. But with your specs on, wouldn't you be all right? Well, they, these are strong, and I still have problems with things. Okay. Like, for instance, looking at my penis. <laughs> yeah. You know, I still... <laughs> Get your magnified glasses. <laughs> no, but so these are tiny, tiny versions of Legos. Tiny. Now, would you think Billy would be interested in this tiny Lego game? I think Billy would, but maybe not in the way that I am, because this is, Billy and I have lived together o- on occasion over the years and the thing we live together really well but one of the things that seems to would eventually get under Billy's skin is when I'm doing the miniature Legos I'm listening to a podcast and I've got a movie on in the other room and Billy when he used to live with me he'd be like what room are you in? I'd be like I'm in this room he's like why is there a movie on in that room? Why is the radio on in the kitchen? Why is this going on? Yeah, I, li- I, I like that. to have different stuff. Wait a minute. So for you to focus, a lot of things have to go on. at the same. Many things happen at the it's same awful. time. You can't do that, Billy. <laughs> no, it's a nightmare. <laughs> There's a movie on and music on. And he's not in those rooms. No. no. And it, he'll come into them and then put something else on. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's awful. It's like hell. <laughs> yeah. It sounds kind of like hell, but you know, I kind of get it. Being someone with ADD, I tend to fall asleep when the TV's on and there's rain going on. But but I'm weird. I can't fall asleep when there's people in the house. I feel like they're going to destroy my house. They're going to do something to me while I sleep. I always think these horrible things. Or these... Even family? Um, like old friends? I have trouble sleeping. I'm very paranoid. I think that, you know, it's like somebody's going to come in the room and try to mess with me. Not like hurt me physically, but, you know. 
I don't get that at all. I know. It's where you could fall asleep anywhere. Yeah. If I'm horizontal, like I've fallen asleep in, in airports, no problem if I can get flat. And there's a lot of stuff going on around me. I think that happened because when I was a kid, my brother had quite bad a- a- asthma. So there'd be doctors and my mum, who is a nurse, in the room and my brother in, a, in quite a bad physical shape. And my mum would always be mystified by the fact that I would just sleep all the way through it. No problem. So it doesn't wow. doesn't bother me. Apparently, any sort of repetition helps you sleep, even if it's really loud. So, like someone banging a drum, if it's repetitive, is easier to sleep in than silence. If it's what repetitive, repetitive. If it's so, repetitive, uh, repetitive. So, like, um, I, I, that's why, like, an engine makes you fall asleep. <sighs> Just that, yeah. But anything that kind of is inconsistent, like, it just has to be consistent. All that thing that they do when they stop the lights. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, Dom, is it safe to say that, like, you know, people could say, oh, you know, he's a ladies' man. Look at all these beautiful women he's gone out with and this and that. Not that many. I'm not saying that. Did I say many? I did say that, didn't I? Yeah. I mean, I think obviously I've been lucky enough to have some some attractive girlfriends over the years. But and you've had a relationship, I, long relationship. Yeah, but a lot of them have not been online. Billy knows more about ladies that I've been with, and I know more about ladies that Billy's with before he right, was married. Right, of course, because he's been married since what? Oh, something. I have been to married a since two thousand and ten. Two thousand ten, you've been married, so Dom almost ten there. years. Yeah, yeah, I was and, the best man. And, but I was with Alison for you know ten years before that. Well, you had a child with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jack. So, Jack. Doesn't Jack have a middle name? William. <laughs> Jack William Boyd. J.W. Boyd. There has always been a William Boyd in Scotland since its, its beginnings. Is that true? William yes. Boyd? <laughs> now, I'm thinking you aren't the type of guy, look at you. You're, yeah. you're, you're a good looking guy. Yeah, I'm pretty you're, good looking. Yeah. 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 You are, you're a musician. You're yeah. an actor. And I'm thinking, okay. Deep charisma, deep charisma. But you're not like, you never go out and party and pick up women. Were you ever like that? Yes, he was. He was. He doesn't look like he would no, do that. I knew Billy when he was single in Scotland. This is before he got married. And <sighs> he he would give a, most of the people on the film crew a run for their money because he's got that wonderful charm, Scottish accent, charm. Uh, he's funny. And I think with Billy and I are the same because we're not six foot two because, you know, we're hobbits. We're slightly small in stature. How tall are you? I'm five seven. How tall are you? Five eight. Billy always says he. <laughs> Billy, Billy always says he's five seven when he's with me. I'm like, right, right. can't be five seven. I'm five seven. But I think that becomes very non-threatening for a lady. They think, oh look, they he's look nice. Cute. Yeah, they're he's not fun. physically threatening, but we can be physically threatening. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to be. So okay, do you think you have like a, a dislike for or an adversity towards people who are tall? Me? No. I love tall people. <laughs> because some people have the, the, what they call a small man complex, but that's probably much smaller Napoleon than complex. Napoleon complex, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think I have that. I never really noticed I was small. You know, I was at school, and it would be around, in your grade system, sort of seventh grade, something like that. And, and it was in a science class, and they measured everyone and weighed everyone to do this sort of percentile thing, you know? And I was in like the bottom, like two percent of height, and until that moment, I thought I was like normal or slightly tall. <laughs> I really? honestly, till that moment, I had no idea. People always said to me, I remember like relatives saying, "Oh, look at Billy; he's going to be tall like his dad," because my dad was like six foot, which in Scotland I suppose is pretty tall. Mm. So in my head, I always thought I was tall. You know, until I was like 12 or 13 or something. And then everybody kind of passing you by? Well, I don't even know if I was ever tall. But until they measured us in science class, <laughs> I just always thought I was tall. It was just never Because that's what they mind. do in science class. They measure you. They measure you. And they weigh and you. Tell we you had that. How much did you weigh as a 12-year-old? 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I was slightly stout. Yeah, and you, that didn't even bother you either, did it? That didn't. I didn't know. I was in a high jump team. <laughs> you were, but were you? <laughs> I could only get three or four inches. This, these are lies. <laughs> well, that part was a lie. Yeah. But the height thing wasn't a lie. I honestly thought I was mid to. Why do you think you had that confidence? 
I don't know. Was it your upbringing? Was it your grandma telling you you could do anything? You're tall. I think you're... it was relatives saying to me, he's going to be tall like his father. And I just thought, yeah, I'll be tall like my father. My mum was only five foot, though. When did you realize, fuck, I'm not growing anymore. This is it. It was around then. I think that put a full stop on my growth. But it made you a hobbit, you know. You wouldn't have been a hobbit. You if have... I grew one more inch, I wouldn't have been a hobbit. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, because we all have to be the same matching height. But like, why can't you wear a shoe that's a little higher or yeah, lower? Yeah, they just wouldn't have done that, I don't think. But let, let's say Elijah, who was obviously, you know, the, the, the most important hobbit in that entire trilogy, right. was six foot. They would probably have cast three other six foot guys. But I think Elijah's five five. He's around about our height. So then they had to match us all together. I was the same as Bill. I went through school thinking, ah, oh, fine, it doesn't bother me at all. I knew I was probably a little bit smaller than most people, but it let me be more cheeky. It let me get away with more stuff. Uh, yeah, that's true, isn't it? Because I yeah. was, listen to this, you're not going to believe this. I was the smallest kid in my high school. Really? I was the smallest kid in my high school. You're quite I, tall now. What height are I'm, you now? I'm six feet on the dot now, but I didn't grow. From my senior year, I was five foot four. I graduated at five four. And then oh, I grew wow. eight inches in the next two years. And I think that's why I have a lot of back issues and senior shit. Senior year? Like, what what not, age is the, that? Senior year is, so when you graduate, you're like, I was 17 and wow. I was in 12th grade. So I graduated and it wasn't until after that summer, after I graduated high school, that I started to grow into college. And people from my high school would come up to me a year later or two years later and go, are you Michael Rosenbaum? I'm like, that is so yeah. weird. Yeah, and they're like, what happened? Do you have hair on your paws now? <laughs> right? Well, I don't, they didn't ask me that, but I, you know. I, Did you get a lot more attention from girls? That yes, and I was, I was always, oh, look, he's a little rosy. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I, I remember feeling like, I remember crying actually in front of my parents because my dad's six four, six five. My mom's tall for a woman, and my mom was always doing popping Valium and drugs. You know, growing up, and my my dad was a pothead, and he was you know doing drugs in the '60s or whatever before I was born. He stopped, but you know, I always said, "What what drugs were you on? This is your fault. Why am I so small?" And I remember storming out of the room and crying because it's like, <laughs> "You did this. Wow. You're fucking drug and do sperm." That's what I thought happened. It's Damn. good to blame people for things. Right? Yeah, I like to blame people a lot. Dude, people, I, <laughs> You're being sarcastic. Yeah. Uh, someone told me once that male children are always taller male? than their mother. Male. male. People who are guys. Uh, let's say that word again. Male. You didn't say it like that before. Male. 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 Male children are always taller than their mothers. And I've looked at that since. And I was told this years ago. And it's always been true. Yeah. Is that real? Really? True with me. You're taller than your mom. Yeah, mom was tiny. And you were taller than your mom. Yeah. How tall was your mom? Five foot one. What about your grandma? Five foot four. What on my father's side? Well, the one your grandma who raised you. Um. Well, oh, she was tall, but as she got older, she got smaller. Well, that's what happens. <laughs> Now, is that is small. that like a collapsing of the of yeah the vertebrae? The vertebrae. I think it's that's what happens. You start to hunch over. So you start sad. To, your spine sort of every the bones start to get. I don't know. Am I making this shit up? No, I no. Don't know. You're only as old as your spine. So always work on your spine. <laughs> that is a true. Yeah, but aren't you as only as old I'm as your finger? Up. I'm gonna sit. No, up. is your finger younger than you sometimes? Your, your spine. Someone said that. Someone very wise. Do you guys get really sad when this happens to me when I'm driving? in LA a lot in traffic and you see someone walking on the street, very, very encumbered by spinal issues, like walking, but poorly bent over with sticks and those walker things. Mm. You know, you're that, talking, you're talking to someone who has had seven spine surgeries. But do wow. you, have you done the stick thing? Do you have you had to walk with sticks? Uh, or is that a leg issue? N no. Do I want, you mean crutches? Oh, no, not crutches. You know, walking Walks sticks. With or sticks. the walker. Oh, the walking stick. No, I've never used a walking stick. I mean, thank God, but I think it's from hockey and all this shit. But I've had, uh, I just had uh, my C4, C5 spot, uh, fused in my neck. So I had two yeah. neck surgeries and I had, I'm fused on my on my back. A lot of sports and shit, but. What, is it because when you're playing hockey, a hockey, a hockey puck <laughs> smashed you right in your neck no that's a rarity okay that's a rarity so it's just the Usually movement it's on checks the uh you know when people hit you into the boards and hockey but it's also wear and tear it's also working at a grocery store i hate to admit this but probably a lot of it stems from working in a grocery store you know you throw boxes off the truck oh my um, i was a stock boy i probably at making 335 an hour i probably 
hurt my disc then. But you know what? It's sexier to say that you got it in hockey games. Much sexier. When you've been checked. That's what I always do when a woman goes, oh my God, you've had surgeries? How? I go, oh, hockey. I used to play hockey. Field? Do you, do you know what no. check? Do you know what checking is? Let me buy you a martini, and I'll tell you what checking is. Um, when they check you really hard, you know, like when, like the start of the game, and someone thinks, right, the first tackle, I'm going to really show him. When they check you really hard, after that, can you skate over to them and say, "Can you not check me quite as hard anymore? Because you've already done a really big." No, one. I don't think that's probably what you do. No. You, you throw s- your gloves off, and you go at it. That's a possibility. That you're allowed to do that. What in do you guys right? think? Because you're from Scotland, you're from Germany. Uh, no, England. I would say England. Right, but, but I claim Germany. But what like, do you, you what know? Do you... Like Hitler did, he was Austrian. <laughs> <laughs> Germany is mine. <laughs> I cl- I claim it. Like right, that. right, right. I was born there, but no. Nice I'm Hitler reference. It's Thank amazing you. we got that in there. Yeah, he, the thing about Hitler that really disappoints me is he retired. I mean, apart from the war and the genocide, retired. Stuff, he retired the the name Adolf, didn't he? You can't call your kid Adolf now, which I think is a wonderful name. Come on, Addy. Addy, come on, get in the but, car. But Addy. Just, but name, it, name him Addy. Yeah, Addy. You don't want Adolf. It's just, you know, it just, it, you know, like, oh, here's my other son, Mussolini. Yeah. Musso, well, come name, over here, will you? His Musso. Name's, his name's Benito, not Mussolini. That's but I just, but it you sounded fine. Hitler, but if I just said Benito, you wouldn't have. What about the last name bringing up Hitler? Has that disappeared? What? Hitler. As if people think, still called Mr. Hitler. Well, I think supposedly the Hitler family when all that, you know, kind of fracas occurred in Europe, right. they said, we got to change our name now. So there are Hitlers still around, uh, people who come from his Previous lineage. Previous, like Prittlers. Yeah, but they're not, yeah, Prittlers, but they're not calling themselves Hitler anymore. Have they changed it to one thing? Like, are they all one thing I'm now? Not sure. Or is it all just... They're all Mussolini's now. Yeah. Is it? That's what they are. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not sure are. about that. All right, but, so, uh, wait, wait, do, let me just finish go, this go, thing go, about stay Adolf. On, stay on Hitler. So, so, please. <laughs> <laughs> supposedly the guys so um there's a there's a, a pair of brothers who made sneakers this is, needs to be a movie i heard it's true but i'm not sure if it is true it might be an urban myth but if it's true it should totally be a movie right there was a pair of brothers Correct. who made shoes and they got into a big fight over an artistic idea behind a shoe and one brother said okay i'm gonna leave and I'll form my own company. And the other one said, okay, I'm going to stay and I'll see what happens with this company. The one who stayed, his name is Adolf Dassler, German, and he called his company Adi Das. And his brother went away and created the shoe company Puma. And they've not spoke to each other, or Puma, as they say in America. They've not spoke to each other since. And they're in two of the biggest shoe companies in the world. That was a fantastic story. <laughs> <laughs> well told. You could be you could be Adi Das, and I'll and be his his other brother, na- someone uh, Das Puma Hitler. Puma Puma Dasler. Anyway, I'm sorry. Inside of you is brought to you by Baked by Melissa. That's right, Baked by Melissa. I got this box, Ryan, and I was like, "Who sent me this beautiful box?" It's colorful and what's in the box what's in the box what's in the box dude beautiful cupcakes i'm talking red velvet milk chocolate cookies and cream i mean and there were just like tons of them in this little box and so tasty and so adorable i mean it made me giggle a little bit i was like who sent these and then i realized wait it's my sponsor i actually naturally reacted to a gift from my sponsor and it was easy dude cool cupcakes they're just like these little cupcakes and i still have them i put them in the freezer because you know i want to i want to I don't, I don't want them to go bad no you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but look guys valentine's day is here i mean it's really close time's running out to send your valentine's a one-of-a-kind memorable unexpected gift that's what this gift is if you want to wow your valentine this year send them bite-sized cupcakes from Baked by Melissa. I might want to marry Melissa. Uh, really? Well, I don't know. I mean, she makes amazing little adorable cupcakes that are just tasty as heck. All right. I told you about the flavors. There's so many flavors to choose from. I like the red velvet, of course. The uh, the Dolce de Leche. Dolce, like Dolce de, de Leche. Dolce de Leche. That was good. See, I can't pronounce it, but you did. Thank God you're here. They got vegan. They got gluten-free options. It's just, I don't know, man. They're moist. 
Some people hate that word. I don't think so. When you're talking about a cupcake, you want it to be moist. Of course you do. Said it twice now. And it's perfect size. It's the perfect size, folks. Baked by Melissa offers one and two day shipping available nationwide. Remember, the last day for standard shipping for Valentine's Day delivery is February 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you may you might want to know that. Uh, I love these things. They're cute as heck. And I hope uh, they stay my sponsor because I'm getting really... Uh, well, what's the word when someone's spoiling you? I guess spoiling you. This Valentine's Day, send your loved ones the perfect gift, Baked by Melissa. Go to bakedbymelissa.com slash IOU and use promo code IOU to get 15% off your order. Take advantage of this special offer for podcast listeners. That's 15% off at bakedbymelissa.com slash IOU. That's bakedbymelissa.com slash IOU, promo code I-O-U. Get some of these. They're delicious. Inside of You is brought to you by CBDMD. CBDMD. If you know me, you know I am the king of CBD. And uh, I believe in it. I think people really react to this stuff. I know my uh, stepdad. Ugh, it's weird. I called him my stepdad. He's Gordon, for God's sakes. He's Gordon, my mom's husband of 18 years. Is that my stepdad? Yeah. It is. God, Gordon, all right, if you're listening, you're my stepdad. <laughs> Congratulations. But uh, they sent me a care package of all this great stuff at CBDMD, and it soothes me. I need it. It distracts me from any pain that I have personally. Guys, we're over a month into the new year, and I bet a lot of you have already given up on your New Year's resolutions. I know. Ryan, did you even have any New Year's resolutions? I didn't. I didn't make any this year. Did you did you think about maybe working out this year more? Went for a run this morning. That felt good. That's 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 good. That's enough. All right. Just because you haven't gone back to the gym, guys, since the beginning of January, it doesn't mean you have to wait till next year to get off the couch again. Uh, and even though getting started can be tough, with a little help from our friends at CBDMD and their amazing topical products, which I use every day, you'll be crushing your goals in no time. They've got the CBD freeze with menthol. I was putting some on my buddy, Tom Welling, who plays Clark Kent, you know, in Smallville with me. And he's like, dude, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then within about 10 seconds, he's like, bro, that's a cooling relief. My muscles, my joints, they just feel real good right now. He didn't say exactly that, but he liked it. He's like, you have to give me some of this stuff. He changed his voice and everything. He did, man. He was like, oh, dude, dude, oh, dude. Bro. Yeah, I, I use this constantly. And you know, if I'm using it, it's probably working. That's what I'm going to say. It is working. So you might want to check this out. Uh, they've got creams. They've got uh, the little balls, you know, where you rub it on the back of your head. You know, they have all sorts of stuff that you can get from there. They have gummies, really stellar products. And I really enjoy it. And I take it with me everywhere I go. CBDMD. CBDMD is offering our listeners, my listeners, 25% off. Are you listening to me right now? 25% off your next order when you use the promo code IOU at checkout. Once again, that's cbdmd.com, promo code IOU for 25% off your purchase of superior CBD oil products from CBDMD. That's right, cbdmd.com. Use the promo code IOU for 25% off your purchase of superior CBD oil products from CBDMD. So let's go back to this. You guys became friends you're both you, you, you didn't meet on lord of the rings we did yeah, yeah we you, did. that's where you met yes i mean you've told this story of course but when did you know billy that i'm i like this dom he's my favorite of all the others um probably quite early so you I'm, admit I'm, I'm, you admit I'm, that he's your favorite you i'm just, just about to say that yeah. i'm not going to admit that yet <laughs> because I feel as though we're still young in our relationship i could let him down <laughs> right I could totally let me down Sean Aston's a nice guy. Yeah. He could become my favorite. He's been on your show. Yes, he has. He has. I've listened to it. Yeah. Yeah, I listened to you. It's a good story. Thanks, man. Yeah. You had to do some research before you said yes. I like your sexy voice. Is that true? Yeah. You think I have a sexy voice? You got a good voice. Thanks. You do. Yeah. You, do have, you have a great voice for this type of medium. Deep. Because a lot of Americans, I think, your age, our age, tend to kind of speak a little bit more up there. You know, it's, it's not fun to little, listen little, to. Little nasally. I didn't. I didn't think that though when your I was voice doing the podcast. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not. Thanks. But anyway, back to your favorites. Back to your favorite, Dom. So be careful here, because I am actually going to say you're my favorite. So just I want you to know that. 
Dom arrived in New Zealand a little later than the rest of us, Sean and Elijah and Orlando and stuff, because I think you were working on something. Yeah, Is he was a right? very successful actor. He was very successful. He was working. Ooh. Yeah, he was working. He was in Europe doing something. Yeah, France. Remember. Tremendous yeah. memory. So anyway, and did you have a shaved head? Yeah, I did yeah. have a shaved head. He had a shaved head when I first met him, and I thought, he looks quite sexy. Thank you. You know, You're attracted a, to him. A little. And I remember we were in wardrobe, and they said, the guy playing Mary's just arrived. Everybody should go up and meet him. And I went up, and, and he, he, seemed, he seemed a very sort of happy... He just came off the flight, I think, and you'd mm. gone straight there. I might be telling this story completely wrong, and, and Dom will uh, correct me. But we sort of said hello, and, and, and he got measured for wardrobe and stuff. And then we went to the pub, and we had a beer, and we played pool. And I said, I like this guy. Ooh. Just like that? Yeah. Like there was something innately kind about him? Something. Or fun or happy about, or what? Kind. Yeah, just because that was, that's a long flight. That's like 30 hours or something. And he still was able and to he's muscle like, Yeah, up. let's come on. Let's go out and we'll, we'll get to know each other and say hello. And I liked that. I Ooh. thought, yeah. I could see the smile on your face. You have sort of like this, this feeling of like just the pure honesty of what you just said. It wasn't like yeah. you're telling a story. I could just see that you do you do like each other. There's, yeah. some, there's something very deeply enmeshed into the culture of being British, of which Billy and I both are, where a way to classically get to know each other is to go for a drink. And I don't think it's quite as automatic as it would be for someone from the United States or someone from Canada. Of course they do it, but there's just something innate when you meet someone for the first time, you're like, fancy a drink? It just happens. It's, 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 it's as much as saying hello or shaking someone's hand. You just go, do you want a quick drink? In America, yeah, you don't, you don't just go up to people like you meet a guy and go, hey, you seem really happy. Why don't we go get a beer? Yeah, it's... It might seem a little bit <laughs> presumptuous. Well, maybe you're like, oh, I, maybe he thinks that I'm gay. Right, right. But of course, like... Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's no, of course, obviously, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, maybe that's the perception maybe in in uh, North America. Yeah. That people, if you just meet a guy for the first time, you're like, you're really kind. You've got a great smile. I heard about your measurements, <laughs> and I think we should go have a Frosty. Right? That's what I... <laughs> and there's also the something in Los Angeles as well, I feel, that when somebody goes for a drink, they have to go for the greatest drink ever made. <laughs> they, they have to say, I know a place in the valley that does a martini that we have to go to. And you're like, that's a 40-minute drive. And there's a bar right there. I can see it with my eyes. That and serves beer. They have beer, and I'm sure a martini. But no, we have to go to this place that just opened so that we can stand in line to get this martini that's made with chocolate from Peru and a chili <laughs> yeah, that his gran left him. It's you... like it's like Billy's totally right in, in telling that story. I was going through makeup and I think Elijah and Sean may have possibly had more to do that day because our rehearsal process was quite kind of rich in terms of Dialect training, sword fighting, horse riding. But you really kayak. rehearsed these scenes. It wasn't like you had like, oh, let's go through it once or twice. It's no, like no. you are like, you know these scenes inside out before you're filming. And we're there with Pete. Pete Jackson is the the king of that whole project. So if you're sat yeah. in a rehearsal room with Pete and with Fran and Philippa, who were his co-writers and co-producers, you're not just pissing about. Like you, you're having to bring stuff and bring questions and you, you know, you're really getting into it. Be prepared, Al right. Alongside horse riding, sword fighting, kayaking, all that kind of stuff. I think in my memory, Sean and Elijah might have had, might have had more stuff to do and Billy wrapped for the day the same time as me and we were both heading into town we were just like let's get a drink and what was amazing about that was it immediately cemented what became one of the more formative things that billy and i did which yeah. was which was a a little bit of drinking and b playing pool because we played pool up and down the length and breadth of those islands we were pretty good at pool. who was better be honest yeah billy, if there were 10 games to play who would win six? You were better at the time. Really? Maybe even now. Yeah, I, I would say Billy would probably win. Are you saying 10? I would say Billy would win seven and I would win three. Who would be drunk, more drunk? Me. Drunker? <laughs> yeah, me. You, you would be drunk. I was younger. That's Billy's why always, maybe he beat you. Yeah, he's always been more responsible than me. Although you you did have a few moments of, of being a tear away. Oh, absolutely. 
I think with pool, I think. <laughs> I, obviously, absolutely. Obviously, I don't remember question. them. <laughs> I, I think there's this weird thing with pool where if you get just the right amount of alcohol in you, your game improves because it's a game of confidence and poise and a little bit of cockiness. Right. But one extra than that, your game starts to fall apart. Yeah. Do you remember a bar we were in? I think we were on location, I think in the South Island somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, no, no, not at all. And uh, <laughs> and we we went on the pool table and do you know, where was that? It was in remember? Queenstown. It was Queenstown. And I, I think it was called the Snake Pit. So the Queenstown is known as the sort of adrenaline capital of New Zealand. It's where you bungee jump and, uh, you know, drive adventure. speed boats. Adventure. adventure. So everyone there is like, you know, young guys from America and Australia and you know it's all these guys with North Face t shirts and yeah. Patagonia. Hoth face. You know, Hoth face. This says Hoth face. Oh sorry. That's uh, Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> He's ripped but off North Face. We're in this bar and we start beating people and it's winner stays on doubles. So we're just beating all these guys coming from everywhere. We're on the table for like three hours, just beating everyone. That's crazy. Till the guy behind the bar calls up the champion pool players from Queenstown and gets them to come to the bar to beat us. And they beat you? No. What? We beat the champions of New Zealand, in my mind, probably Queenstown at least. But the guy behind the bar calls up the people to come and get us off the table. We were, we were in this like... That's, ex- that's cool. Yeah, I wrote it in my diary. That's why you're such, you know, brothers we, and We were in here. this like weird flow. Like I don't, the, the rest of the day is kind of vague, but I'm going to assume we went out, had a couple of beers, had some food. And then we were playing casual pool. Someone came over to kind of get the table off us. And we were like, well, do you want to play Winner Stays On? Because we wanted to keep playing. So we thought, well, if we beat these guys, then Billy and I can keep playing our game of singles. So we beat those people. Someone put coins on the table. Jeez. Oh, now we've got to play these people. And it became a thing. It feels good. Were women we were, looking at you? Or am I going? We played. Hey, everyone. We hey, played. Nice. Some, we played. Did some you get women. laid that night, Dom? Maybe. You did. I mean, it wasn't just women. There were pigeons that were sat on the windowsill looking in <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> yeah. Did you go People's on set dogs. the next day and brag about it? Yeah, we yeah, definitely did. Absolutely. And they wouldn't believe a freaking lick of it. I mean, they? this is 20 years ago. We're still bragging about it. Yeah. I want to play to something right for now. you. This is, uh, this is irrelevant. But I, it's I want, an elephant. I, irrelevant. Oh. I want you to tell me what this is. I this is by accident. I found this online. Oh, really? I swear to God. Listen. The hobbits Merry and Pippin, who provided much of the comic relief in film one, find themselves in more desperate circumstances in the two towers. We're basically prisoners of war, and, and Mary's had a terrible gas. You know I've never seen Mary like that before, so it's a real sort of. Things have been bad up to now, but this is just like a world that we don't understand. Do you can, know? I, can I say? Go ahead. How we... much higher is your voice back then? Uh, Billy like talks up there at that point, right? It's, well, he's got blood coming all over. I didn't know what was going on. What a nightmare. Did you hear the other voice? <laughs> is, that, is that me talking like? No, the, the narrator. Was it you? It was me. Wow. And Tell was, us about that. I told you you've got a great voice. But there you could see it was higher because we were both younger. They said, hey, they want you to be, it was during when I was on Small, they just said, you want to be the narrator for the Two Towers, for the for the TV special. And I go, hell yeah, we'll give you four Lord of the Rings uh, tickets, we'll fly you in first class, we'll pay you some money. I'm yeah. like, what? This what do you mean, t- Lord of the I Rings tickets? I took Erica tickets. Christensen, who's a friend, huh? What do you mean, Lord of the Rings tickets to the premiere? To the premiere, sorry, yeah. Here? Yeah. Wow. In LA, in Hollywood, yeah. Wow. At the Arclight? Uh, yeah, wherever it was, I was there. Can I tell you a funny, that, uh, a, a story that would have been hilarious had we done it, and yeah. I really wanted to do it. But Billy and Elijah and I think Orlando nixed it, and I was like, "Oh, come on, we got to do it." So I'd, you'll 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 remember this at the ArcLight. If you approach the ArcLight from Sunset Boulevard, so you've walked past Amoeba Records yep. on your right, you cross the street. Yeah. Then there's the way to go in. Just on on the side there, yeah. there's a little water feature that has like gently flowing water. Yeah, I know down. what you're talking about. Usually in the summertime, mm-hmm. f- falling onto some like soft pebbles, I would call them. Yes. Great for skimming. Right. Those type of pebbles. Right, so when we were doing the premiere for Two Towers, it must have been, I said to Billy, Elijah, and Orlando, let's stand underneath the water feature. All of us get completely soaking wet 
and do the red carpet and not mention it at all. Like when people say, you're clearly soaking wet. Don't say anything. Just do the interview. You didn't and do it. No. And I was like, come on, let's Who do it. Who was with you? No, I don't think anyone was with Nobody me. was with you? No. Had you had a few beers? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he, no, Dom always has he these has sort these, of ideas. Was it your idea to get the tattoo of the nine? No, that was probably more early. But I was one of the ringleaders. I think we I were all really you were up there. I we thought, were in there. I would have thought you were one of the ones. Yeah. So you all have a tattoo on your right arm. No. No. Anywhere, Anywhere want. you wanted it. So where's yeah. yours, Billy? On my right ankle. On your right ankle. And it's the Elvin? Number nine. Number nine. Because there's nine, nine of us. Nine of you. Yeah. N- and, and we all went, all eight of us, seven of us, because Sean Bean was already dead. Mr. Bean? Not in real life. Love Sean Bean. He always oh, he's dies. great, Sean things. Bean. Great. He's very good at dying. Great. Right. So he was already gone. And John Reese Davis didn't want a tattoo. Okay, Hank. Why not? Why not? Is it? I'm not sure actually. Did, but was, well, let's was, get, it, was, let's was guess. he difficult? Was he? Was he? Let me guess. Was he a? He just uh, he was Jewish and he couldn't be tattooed because they can't bury a Jew who's religious. And it's not that. Okay. Was he? Uh, was he a really delicate skin that would maybe just bleed well, profusely? Well, could that, be that, that, but I don't think so. He was definitely allergic to his Gimli makeup, so he couldn't wear it for two days in a row. Okay, well, or was he an asshole? No, it wasn't I don't that. Think it was any of no? the three. I think John was, because he's quite a lot older than us, John. He was the oldest member of the fellowship. And I do think that John probably thought that tattoos were more in the groups of sailors, drug dealers, and bikers. So I he, genuinely, didn't, he, didn't have a, he didn't have a tattoo. It wasn't, because this, this is the year 2000, is it? Yeah, 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 it would be, yeah. And I still remember back then thinking, oh, I'm one of the minority that has a tattoo. But now we're, at the very least, even Stevens. How many tattoos. do you have, Billy? I just have that one. You have that one tattoo. So was it hard to convince Billy to do this? No, Billy was definitely easy. The only ones that were even slightly a challenge, I think Ian McKellen had to slightly yeah. get talked into it, yeah. but he was, he was good with it. When we approached him, he was like, hmm. Okay, darling, yeah, think about it, think about it. And then once everyone was doing it, he's fine. Were Vigo, you there when he got it? We were all there. Now, did anyone weep or were, was in, they couldn't handle it as much? I got a tattoo with my brother. We wrote my uh, grandmother's name who passed, and he was just a puss. I mean, I love him, but he was just like, oh, 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 oh. I'm like, are you kidding me right this? Are you joking? Yeah. I it re- doesn't like hurt that bad. No, I didn't think it hurt that bad. I remember Sean Astin being the one who moaned. Give me most. a Sean Astin moan. Just did he get it on his foot, Sean Astin? Same place as me, yeah. Just like, ah, ah, so, so. And he was he was before us all. And I thought, oh, it is quite sore. But I think on your foot, it's it's quite It's painful. Sore, you know. Who was the who was the coolest about it? No pain. Vigo. Vigo was cool. Well, Vigo already had a bunch of tattoos. God, he's so beautiful. He's like, and then he then he has a pain, no Everything. pain threshold. All yeah, honestly, things. here's my favorite Vigo. How cool is Vigo's story? When he made out with you? No, that's not cool. <laughs> that was painful that was and scary. <laughs> we won't tell that story. <laughs> we will. We'll just we will at some time. point. <laughs> yeah. But we were out one night that became a night of drinking and eat, and just just a great night. You know, everybody went out. I think it was snowing. It was a crazy night. We are on vodka and... Uh, there wasn't many of those nights, you know, because we worked so hard and they started at 4 a.m. So there wasn't a lot of big nights out, but this one was great and everyone was there and it got to like three in the morning. We weren't working the next day. The next day was a travel day. Gets to like three in the morning, gets to bed, crash. We had to get up at say about eight or nine to travel to the next place. And I see Vigo downstairs getting into, you know, the car that's going to drive. Well, I'm getting into the car that's driving me. And I see he's holding something, like a big square. I'm like, what's that, Vigo? What's that you got? I was like, it was a great night last night. He's like, yeah, great night. I was like, what's that? What's that? <clears throat> he pulls it up. It's a painting that he did when he got in that night. Like an amazing painting. Like... You know, he stayed up all night doing this. Three foot, four foot by four foot, something like that. When everybody else is smashed and asleep, and he's probably a little smashed too. Yeah, totally. And he's (laughs) and he's making art. He's making art that I could never imagine. Can can we just? You know what? I imagine him naked for some reason doing that. Oh, of course he was naked. 
I'm sure he was. And he was writing poetry, and he was in the back of a pony. Yeah, he's he is brilliant, Vigo. He's like the greatest example in my life up to now of the quintessential artist. I mean, obviously, Billy's an, an amazing artist. He's an actor. He's a oh yeah. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. I look at the things that he does with music, and I think, wow, that's that's incredible. And Vigo's not quite an accomplished musician as Billy, but in terms of the way that Billy uh, Vigo looks at his life, everything's an opportunity to be artistic, whether it's writing or drawing. He's a brilliant poet. He's a brilliant photographer. And I mean, obviously, as an actor, I mean, the journey that Vigo's gone on from, I think after Aragon, he was offered pretty much everything that any lead man was offered. Turned it down, turned it down, turned it down. He wanted to do stuff with horses. He did a couple of films with horses. Spent a lot of time with his family. How do you how do you do that? That's you know on a different level. How do you have the? I mean, how do I? He does so much, and when do you spread yourself too thin? Like for him, it seems like he doesn't. He just does what he wants, and he enjoys it. And I think the key maybe is to do something and not try to be. You're not trying to be great at it. You're not trying to make money out of it. You're just trying to enjoy it. Yeah, and I'd like to think that's what I'm. I'm trying to do is I you know, go into this next chapter of my life where I'm just like, you don't have to be great at everything yeah. or good at everything. Stop being so hard on yourself. Just Billy, you play music. Mm. It makes you feel good, right? You right? love it. If you make no money, you're still going to play music. Exactly, and exa- I think you've you've hit the nail on the head. Oh, that's Ev- a fun phrase, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Hit the nail on the head. On the head. Well done, Billy. You haven't skimmed off the side there. You've got it right in the center. It's about just making something and getting out there and just enjoying it. I think too many people worry that, oh, it's not quite ready. It's not It's not quite polished enough. It's They're not, not going to like it's it. It's not good enough. People won't like I'll it. I'll be embarrassed. Yeah. Whereas you, you get more attracted to art that's a bit twisted and broken you know what i mean also like the cosmos the the older that i've got the more i felt like there's there's some sort of there's some sort of personality which is which is uh, not the greatest way of describing it. the cosmos there's there's some sort of presence and Jesus, Michael, you want to calm down a little Jesus, bit Jesus, that's my camera that's, right oh, here. Broken. That's, broken. that's an expensive is camera is that a Leica? Oh, no, it's an Olympus. It's all right. It's all right. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> I think that there's something very significant to be said for holding on too tight to something. When you really want something, yeah. and you're trying super hard, it's like sand like slipping yeah. through your fingertips. It just you, You're squeezing too tight and it just falls through. The thing that Vigo does, certainly as an example, being a young man that I've watched, and as I've grown older and become closer and closer to Vigo, is... He lives in flow, right? He just yeah. flows. Comes Ebb back, and flow. Comes back to LA. He's like, yeah, I'm here for a few days. Anytime you go over to Vigo's house, there's always a rat, not a rabble, but a bunch of people there. And he's very present, I take it? Very present. But like some of his family's there, some of his friends there. He's got a fire lit. He's made some food. He's cooking up some stuff. Oh, you're vegetarian. That's okay. I've got some stuff in my fridge. There's no hassles. I've never seen Vigo be like, oh, I forgot the thing or I've got to do this. He's just in flow. He's never late. How do you, how do you, th- that's a good question for you guys. A couple serious things or important things, things that, you know, when people take out of there, like these guys are really funny and all this, but how do you turn off? How do you stay present and how do you separate your work where you're not your work? I've talked to many different people about this, but what's your theory? Like, what do you do to not obsess on, oh, I've got wild things. I've got this other movie. I've got my, you know, my music. I've got my family. I've got, how do you turn off and just be present? What is it? Is it something that you've always been able to do or you were taught or you were... Yeah, I think it's incredibly important. I think it's the most important thing in life is being in the place where you are, being present, you know. And I know that it's a sort of um, buzzword and all that and a way of thinking, but I think it's a, a universal truth and it has been for thousands of years. And people understand that's the way to be successful as a human. Actually putting that into practice is really difficult. But I think once you understand that that is the most important thing, then you, you know, try and, you know, bend your life a little bit to try and make that as simple as you can. And if that's meditating, which it is for a lot of people, um, or if it's just changing the way you think of things or, 
you know, some people will give you a really good two second meditation where you just remember and just go, wait a minute, just breathe in, breathe out. It's one I like to give to my son, which is, you know, when it all gets too hectic and I'm supposed to do this, but I'm supposed to be there and I haven't learned this. You know what? Just breathe in, breathe out and say to yourself, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And it just kind of brings you back to where you where you are and where you should be, you know. Do you deal with any kind of like, I mean, you've had like, if you look at the story of your life, and I don't know you that well, obviously. At a young age, you had some, you went through some shit as a kid. Mm. You know, your grandma raised you, you lost your parents at a young age. Mm. Uh, you know, some people could sit there and say my parents were dysfunctional and this and that, but are you someone who dwells on the past, someone who looks, who still has moments where you go back and go, what the... You know, do you feel like you've still got one foot in the past or do you try to really be present and move forward and, 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 and you haven't needed to talk about it and deal with it? Or have you already dealt with it? Do you know what? There's, it's really complicated, I think. And I suppose it depends on the time that you live in the world. And at the moment, nothing against you from earlier on when you said you blamed your parents because you were too short. There's a big thing just now, it's good to blame your parents for everything, you know, I feel. And in some ways, this is an awful thing to say, I'm sure. In some ways, because I lost my parents when I was young, it freed me from that because I couldn't blame them because they weren't there. So I had my own thing to deal with. And so I couldn't say, you should have made me go to soccer more. I would have been a great soccer player if you had, you know, pushed me a little. I, I didn't have that. So I had to say to myself, I should have played soccer more, you know, that was my fault, you know. So in an awful way, it was freeing because in the world that we live in, where I think people like to blame their parents for everything, I didn't have that. I was left with myself. You know, I couldn't blame my grandmother. She was slowly getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> but, um yeah. You know, I, and and everyone has their baggage, you know. So I grew up in a council estate in Scotland. So I have that Scottish, oh, I'm Scottish. You know, there's something about that that, you know, I, I think nationalism isn't a great thing. I think it's lovely to say I'm Scottish and look at our great history, but don't be nationalist about it, you know. I think that causes a lot of problems in the world you know, that my country's better than yours. So I, I kind of watched that. And then working class is another one. That's a real sort of chip on my shoulder that we've got to fight, you know, we're Marxist. We've got to kind of, you know, defeat these. And, you, you know, you put yourself into these groups. And I think these groups that you put yourself in causes a lot of problems in your life. So the more you can kind of just try and get rid of those groups and just kind of go, hey, I'm sitting in this room with these three guys. and Great guys. This is fun. Yeah. We're talking. We're listening. The more that the world can do that just now, I think the better. Boy, when you just zone in and you're not, we're not goofing around, I was just like... That's beautiful, isn't it? Captivating. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know it sounds funny, but... I, I feel like I just learned something. It is. And in, in, in a three minute thing you just said, I feel like I'm listening and I'm going, you know, you didn't have your parents to blame. But in, in a sense that I'm like, and, and I don't necessarily blame my parents. I let things go and I love them. But I, I you know, in a sense, I, I'm lucky that I had that. Yeah. So always be grateful. Always just be grateful for whatever you had because someone had it worse and this is life and it's only going to get worse or better <laughs> at times intermittently. Exactly. Yeah. And like, but it, it just... Nothing you can it do It just about put it, things either. into perspective. Yeah, perspective is huge, right? Yeah. But it's also another easy thing to say and a difficult thing to do. Because when you, do, when you look in perspective, you just think, that guy's got a big house, he's got three cars. and Two, you, you it, have two. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't specifically <laughs> talking about you. It's not you. that big. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. <laughs> but you know, that is perspective. Yeah. To, it to is. speak to speak on Billy's behalf, if I could, for a minute. Thank you, just darling. Gonna touch, yeah. Just gonna it, touch it, your knee. It was now. beautiful. Yeah, it was lovely. I think Billy had to do quite a lot of growing up a little faster than most people needed to when I was Billy's age, when he 
sadly lost his parents. I was still running around at school and doing plays and having fun and eating lollipops and all that kind of stuff. So Billy had to grow up a lot quicker than certainly I did. And I think because of that, Billy worked out things that I worked out a little later of like, it's all right. Everything's fine. Like get happy, do the things that make you happy, smile, be grateful. So I've watched Billy. I mean, Billy's a little bit older than me, but in terms of his- He doesn't look it. Tiny. I mean, I not that you look no, old. No, he doesn't. I'm he saying doesn't. he looks young. He, he does. Looks, yeah, He's yeah. the Peter Pan. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. He, he was the Peter Pan of the Hobbits. I mean, Elijah looks amazingly young. Sean Astin looks young. Yeah. I look young. But everyone would go on about Billy's age going, yeah. you are joking. You're 64. Yeah. You look incredible. <laughs> 64. Back then. Yeah, back then. He's 102 <laughs> now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he's Billy just got there a little quicker, so- Billy and I are obviously friends and peers and, and, and we've helped each other out over the years, but there's been times where I've been struggling with something and Billy got there eight, 10 years ago. So there was a time we were walking down Abbot Kinney one time. I was seeing a girl. I was kind of half in, half out. I was like, yeah, I like her, but I'm not sure. And I turned around to Billy. We were leaving at this point. He was going back to his wife and son. I was walking to my car. I said, Billy, shouting at him across Abbot Kinney, which was completely inappropriate. I was like, Billy, how do you... How are you okay with the fact that, you know, it's just you and Ali now for the rest of your life instead of like other girls to kiss or other girls to look at? And Billy said, be here now, right? Be here now. Like, this is my situation now. I love it. I'm here now. He was yelling that across the street. <laughs> be here now. <laughs> well, look, from, look, from like 15 feet away, you know. And I got in the car. How and profound I, and simple. Yeah, totally. Be here now, dude. Be here now. Fuck off. What are you going to do? You're not kissing We're another here. girl. Like, kiss Think that. about that when it comes, when right. it happens. Exactly. And then someone punched me right in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> As they, no, they didn't really. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a beautiful moment. And All I right. think. He's he's been able to do that for me over the years. Listen, I want to get to this because I we got something really cool that you know coming up. This is awesome to hear these stories, and you know I wish we had more time. Maybe you guys will come back. But, I, doubt, um, I seriously doubt. Yeah, I will. You I will. love it here. It's nice. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really. Oh, good. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I have too. I think you're really fun. Oh, thanks, man. And I knew Dom was fun. Thank you. And I've well, got no idea who that guy in the That's Ryan. Is. I'm sorry. It's Ryan. You know, I, I just, you know, but Ryan's amazing. And he's funny, actually. Don't put him on the spot to be funny. Ryan, you know these Tell guys. Tell us a joke, Ryan. Come on. You've seen The Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you know a lot about it? Did you read the books? I did not read the books, though, no. Get out, Ryan. You Get should. Out. All right. They're good books. Yeah. Are they? I don't know. There's a lot of books in this room. Yeah, I've There's read Lord a lot of, of them, the Rings in here. I'm not a big reader. I don't think people look at me and like, oh, he's an intellectual. But I do like history. So I read, you know, the John Adams book I read. I read. Let's not bore people. Well, okay. John Adams, read. is that the uh, Summer of 69 guy? No, that's Brian. John Adams was second president of the United States. He's also a lawyer who defended the British who... You just said don't bore people. people. Sorry, uh, boring. Um, <laughs> God, there's so much I want to talk to you about, but I want to get into something that's important. So really quick, make these quick. Uh, you were in the room, you were at the bar when uh, a girl smacked Dom full-handed Ooh. on the face, correct? You were there. Thailand, Thailand. More than once. <laughs> oh, really? More than once? See, no, no. I, I buried the other one. So so th- this girl just, woman came up to you and you didn't do anything wrong, right? No, from my recollection, I mean, Billy might be able to tell a, a different story. From my recollection, we're in Thailand. We had walked through a bar onto the beach where there were beach tables associated with the bar. And we were having, remember this now? Yeah. We were just having a really, it was just Billy Nice and conversation. I, lovely but conversation. We had right. a couple of beers. We were getting into something kind of fun. I was into it with my best mate in Thailand. We were really having a good time. And this girl, drunk, came over and just said, can I sit here? And I kind of said, yeah, you can sit there. But I was in no way interested in starting a conversation with right. her. Right. Because I wasn't in my Billy. mate. Right. We ignored her for a good 30 seconds. And then she said something along the lines of, am I boring you or, or shouldn't I be here? And I said something like, yeah, kind of. Like, like I'm talking to my mate. And the next thing I knew, she smacked me in the face. Did it hurt? You, did it hurt? Is yeah, that how you remember like it? Yeah, that's Did you guys move right? or get up? Did no, you get up? No, we stayed, we stayed still. And she, Billy, did you laugh? Did you? I, no, it looked painful. <laughs> I, it wasn't a laughing slap. It was like, oh, there's like, a mark on your face. I had tears in my eyes, not because I was upset, because it hurts. It brought someone... tears to your yeah. eyes. Yeah. And no, nothing happened. She just got up and walked away, Gone. and you guys continued a conversation. Yeah. Which and... I think is the right way to deal with it, right? She had so little effect on me that after she hit me, I just continued to ignore her. I would. It, it seems like I would have done something like this. Let's say I was talking to Billy, and all of a sudden, I got mm. smacked. I go, oh, my gosh. You... Why would what you do fuck? that? Yeah. Dude. I, Did you believe that happened? Then we you, get back. You put yourself in the moment there. Yeah. I just put myself that, in the that's moment. That's a like, good actor. What the fuck? What did I do? I'm talking to my friend. Yeah. 
That's good. I think I felt all those things. But you when just I, didn't say it. No, I connected. I'm an emotional guy. I connected with Bill as soon as it happened. And Billy looked at me with this face, which I know that Billy gives Holy me every so often. Fuck. Which is like, that just happened. He kind of went. <laughs> and didn't you also, because you, like, you're like you a tough guy, Dom. Like you, I don't know. Like true. People look at you and you think, they don't know that you'd be tough if they don't know you. You wouldn't go into a bar and go, oh, I wouldn't fight that guy. But you're kind of the guy that's like, if you fuck mess with me, I'm, you know, I'm not afraid of you. Hey, a little bit. A little bit of that. I've, I've played around with fear a lot in my life, so I think I definitely have that. Well, I don't know about a bar situation. I mean, if a bigger guy's messing around sure, with you, sure, you're not bar, stupid. I'm gonna leave. Right. But I'm not. I'm. I'm. This is one of the fundamental differences I think between Billy and I, and I've learned a lot through watching Bill. Is I get off on and I'm energized mm. by confrontation, and Billy over the years, I don't has like confrontation. Tended to be like, that's not my jam. And Dom yeah. will he if he's scared of something as if there's fear, he'll look into that and and yeah, I don't like fear. No, I could he sense something. Me, yeah, he said to me last last year, that there's a big there's a big shark week thing happening, and the vast does me and Dom. Do we want to go and swim with great whites? And I was like, no. <laughs> And he's like, but why wouldn't you? I mean, this I is a chance. And, a, and I was like, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to swim with... I've seen Jaws. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. <laughs> that's, 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 and, I wouldn't and, want to and, do that either. And I can't get Dom's... When Dom's like... I was like, well, we'd be in a, a, a cage? No. We'll just be swimming. That's with, crazy, Dom. No. Because what if one... Here's what goes on. I, I, I take not only my mind, but Billy's mind, and probably the rest of the world. What if <laughs> one of them is hungry? Yeah. What if one I'm of them just sees angry something? For a second. What, I have a feeling that they're, I'm the one person they won't like. Yeah, they'll look at me and go, "Oh, that's not a regular human. I want to, I want to eat his dumb ass." Yeah, I yeah. mean, well, if you're exhibiting a lot of fear in the water, you might, you might get tired. Yeah, and why them. wouldn't you? Well, okay, so forgive me, but you guys are both coming from less of a place of knowledge about sharks than I am. Not that I'm an expert on sharks, but I know a little bit more about sharks than you. I, I know I, I when a shark bites you. I know when a shark bites his eyes roll over. A shark's got lifeless eyes, doll's eyes. Sorry, go So on. No, it's all right. But the monstrous myth that has been built about sharks and other animals yeah. is something that is patently not true. We, there are an average of eight shark attacks a year on humans. And how many car crashes? Of which maybe two of them are fatal. And we kill 1,700 sharks a second. Are you serious? A second. So that's hundreds of millions of sharks are dying a year, and they maim us eight to ten so times. So you're a saying year. we deserve it. Obviously. No, I'm saying this this is just statisticals, but the statistics of it. But if we were to go swimming with sharks, which we were gonna do, but it didn't happen, there are there are different times of the year where sharks are in feeding mode. So you we wouldn't I would not get in the water with great whites when they are Low, Hungry or low on body fat, ready to feed, looking for seals, looking for anything. What we would do is we would go swim with them when you've got heavily pregnant females. They literally turn off their digestive system. They turn off their aggression. So you can you can hang on to their dorsal fin, swim around with them, and they're just not interested. They don't have an appetite. They're not interested. So I, not only that, but being on a boat with Billy and exploring the idea of fear and then getting someone like Billy, who, who might have a little bit more fear, into the water is so empowering to people who are terrified of sharks because they'll look at Billy and go, he seemed a little scared of sharks. Wow, now he's swimming with the great white? Maybe I can do that too. It sets you free. What if, what if, what if your, your theory or your, your um, experiment went wrong? Would you then say you guys were all right? Or would you try to get Sean Astin to then go swimming and see if they eat him? <laughs> yeah. no, look, I mean, look, if, if something went terribly wrong, of course you have to deal with those consequences. I'm always playing, certainly with animals, with statistics. I got it. So you. it looks dangerous, but from my knowledge and from the way, the way that we're working with them, it is statistically way less dangerous than it looks. And, you know, it just, in my mind, it just wouldn't happen. Obviously, like Billy said, what if you got angry, turned around, didn't like the look of you, right. and bit a huge chunk out of you? You're in, you're in trouble. Did you almost get in a fight with Orlando Bloom once? Um, yeah, I almost got into like a, it would probably, I think, I mean, hopefully Billy would have split it up because Billy You was were there, there, Billy? I was there. I was just remembering it in my mind. And you know the main thing that I remember from that? What? Was Dom's shoes. <laughs> were you wearing Adidas? Dom, heavy, Dom was heavy, wearing, heavy shoes. was wearing, they were like brown Ox blood sort of yeah. shoes, it's almost like a Cuban heel that had had a, a kind of they, they had a, a rim round them like that, you know. 
I don't know what like that metal or steel. No, just like leather, but right. you know, and it was stitched in. And I remember, I, I remember you kicked Orlando Bloom, and at the time I thought, oh, I bet that really hurt. Yeah, I bet it hurt. But you kicked him. Yeah, I kicked him. So not we, on purpose. No, no, on purpose. We we were in a bar. We'd gone to Sydney. Myself, Orly, uh, Lige, and Bill, and I think Elijah like had an early night or something. So the three of us, right, or maybe he went home early after dinner, and we had been training the week before in New Zealand, and I had destroyed my tricep muscles, the most sore my muscles have ever been in my entire life. I couldn't touch him. I couldn't like uh, ex- extend my arm. You know that feeling in the gym where you're so sore. I know I, what happened now. I could feel it. I had, to, no, somebody- I had to sleep on my back. And I said to the guys on the plane, I was like, guys, because we all train with this guy, Dave Nuku. I said, my arms are destroyed. Please just don't be conscious of that. And they were like, yeah, okay, fine. Orly, for the rest of the week, would just come behind me and just pinch my triceps just to get in my head. And it was excruciating. He'd be like, oh, I really hurt. Orly, don't, don't. Seriously, don't, don't, don't. And he'd be like, I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. He knew exactly what he was doing. This happened over the course of at least a day, if not two so days. So you let it go a few I let times. it go. I let it go. I told him. I was like, don't do that. So, because he knew, and then we were in a bar, we were drinking. He came up behind me, he grabbed both my triceps and squoze them. And I just, I just lost it. So, I just, I just horse kicked him. I just, where? Like, um, probably around his thigh or knee. Did it hurt him? Yeah, yeah, it hurt him. He, he was, he was upset. So, then he got in my face and I got in his face. And I was like, I've been telling you, I've been telling you that I'm going to fight back if you keep doing it. And he's all, you know, wiggy and stuff. And did Billy try to stop it? No. Billy was stood right next to us thinking, I'm going to see this one out. <laughs> Just <I'll laughs> see what happens. Let's see what happens. Nah, now you're being, now <laughs> you're being interesting. No, I think if it had got really bad, you, yeah, you, I think did you hug it out? You ended up hugging it we out? We eventually did. But it got heated. It got heated. Like nose to nose? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. fuck you. Yeah, pushing, fuck pushing. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. Did, did anybody say, look, I don't want to fight you right now. But I told you a million times, and if you want to fucking throw down, I'm going to throw down with you. Mm, I, th- I don't think it was, I don't want to fight. I think it was a lot of like, you know, I've told you. What the fuck is your problem? I told you. And it got pretty heavy. And then I think Bill at some point was like, all right, come on, guys, let's have a drink. And when we went to get a drink, then it turned into, quite sweetly, the two of us being a bit upset. Where I was like, mate, why, why would you do that? And I got upset. And he was like, I forgot. And I was like, you couldn't have forgot. It's been going on for See? two years. So. But he never did it again. That's the thing. He didn't do it again. You know what? That happened to me. I was bald. It was a second year Smallville. One of my friends was in Vancouver with me. And we were walking around with my other two friends. And he kind of smacked me on the back of the head on a cold, frosty Vancouver oh. day. And I go, ah, hey, don't do that, man. Come on. And then he did it again. And I go, dude, stop that, man. It actually really hurts, man. Don't do that. And then he did it again. And then he did it again. And the fourth time I go, he's a big dude. I go, listen, man. Jay. You're a big fucking dude, and I know you'll probably beat the shit out of me. If you do that one more time, I'm going to punch you in your fucking face, and you're going to bleed. Do you understand? One more time. And that fucker didn't do it. Good. Because I think he realized, I'm going to fucking hit you. Yeah. And I think Orlando pushed you over that moment. like He he thought you were maybe kidding or whatever. It was funny. And you let him know it's not. Yeah, yeah. And Sometimes people do, yeah. You learn things about people in those places as well. I think it's a, it was quite a formative bonding moment with sure. Ollie and I where we realize okay we have lines one of us crossed the lines we've talked about it and now we're yeah. through but can I ask you something about your bald head yeah so when you played Lex Luthor I was bald it wasn't a bald cap when you played Lex Luthor yeah. for how many seasons six seven seven mm-hmm. the entire time he's bald yeah so you shaved your head for seven every, years every episode every, every yeah oh every episode they and do it was a little two bit hours because they had to put all this makeup but my fan my listeners have heard it a million times but it, it took two hours for the first three years because they had to put all these different colors and because i can't have a hairline and it, it was it was a lot did you notice a difference in the way that people kind of came to you in the street because now you've got an intense kind of look yeah right? it was weird in fact it helped me with the role it really did once i shaved my head there I, go, is with the I go I, I could do yeah, this yeah i remember seeing i go that. i could do this now it was like when I had hair, I didn't know if they, I thought they'd fire me. And then the second they shaved it in the trailer and I looked in the mirror, I go, and I put that suit on. You look cool. I became, yeah, I became Lex Luthor. Yeah, and that you, was it. And I get the confidence just exuded. You're, the best, really you're felt, the best thing in that show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man, you are. Billy, you've never seen it. I'm not going to say it because I, I like Kristen. Oh, yeah. You Crook? Were, you were yeah. Kristen. She's amazing. She's a very good she, friend. I love her. She was on the podcast. She's fantastic. Oh, she's I love them. I really love them all. We've all done right, a listen. couple of films together. 
Really? Yeah. So she must love you. She's she wouldn't do another film. Everyone loves you. No, Billy. no. Everybody loves you. All right, listen, I want to get into this because you have to go. And, do you know, it. If, if Billy wasn't late, we would have had more time. Hey! Uh, yeah, good point. You like that? You no. like that little bit? I feel like I could do that now. I feel like we're, we have a bond. No, I don't think we're I, that cool. No, yet. we're not. We're not. Billy's but known I, in my social group as the loveliest man in the world. This is outside of. I've heard this. And stuff. All my Mancunian friends are like, how's the loveliest man in the world? And I'll go, I'm fine. And they go, no, no, not you, Billy. And I'll go, oh, he's fine. Well, he is. He's sweet. You're sweet, too. You're, he's you're sweet. Sweeter. lovely. He's you sweeter. know, I, like I said, I know Billy, that, but you, you'll send me texts. You'll send me little emails. You're, you're present. You're like, you, you, like I could tell, like, I, I feel I want to hang out with you more. And we yeah. don't, but it's like there's still that bonding. And we're like, when we do hang out, it's easy. It's just yeah. easy. And yeah, that's, Don, that's important. Don kind of cares, you know. He keeps, he keeps, he doesn't like forget about people. You know, right. he's, and I like that. There's not yeah. that many people I who agree. are like that. All right, let me get into this. You have talked for a while. It sounded to me like, Dom, you've been talking to Billy, and Billy's finally on board. You guys have worked some stuff out. And there's a uh, strong possibility of you doing a podcast together. Mm. I'm, I'm really into it now. At first, it sounded like a, a great white situation. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to jump in the water. <laughs> but I'm, I'm in. I'm a hundred percent. I think this is exciting because I mean, you see other podcasts, and I have a feeling. Well, I know it's 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 going to be Lord of the Rings oriented. Well, right? Yeah, that will be the foundation, I would think. Mm -hmm. But why don't you talk about? Because we th we're going to do the first episode after this. Why don't you talk yeah, about? Yeah. You're going to record it here in my house. Yeah, that we've warmed up. We're ready. I for think it. it's yeah. a good thing you do really this. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it will be that we'll definitely come back to Lord of the Rings because that was an intense four years where we first met and we have, you know, many stories never been told, I'm sure. And uh, so I'm sure as we talk, as, as Dom says, you know, they were formative in our relationship and things that we still think now. So I, I know that we'll always come back to Lord of the Rings and our time in New Zealand. But we'll also look at other things. We'll we'll go deep into some things, as we did today. I feel like it will it will um it will find its own shape. Do you think do you have a name already? Have you discussed names? Well we might talk about that on the podcast, but like the, the working title at the moment. Go on, Dom. The working title at the moment, which I, I don't think will stick, so we might think of something else, is two hobs in a pod. Two Hobbits in a podcast. I yeah. like. That was not my idea. That came from our dear, dear friend, Nigel. Who but, we met during Lord of the Rings. Um, I said to Billy, probably a year ago now, or something like around about that time, I said, we should do a podcast. And it took a little a while, because when I first said that, Billy was like, great, what time's it on? And I was like, no, we have to record it. And he's like, what? What station's it on? I was like, no, it's not on a station. He's like, talking to my dad. Yeah. He's I, like, I, I, I said, it's get, not real. I, I didn't like, get podcasts. He's like, well, how do, how do I listen know. to it? Yeah. I was like, you, you go onto your podcast app on your phone. He's like, I don't listen to podcasts. I was like, well, you should start listening to some. And he's like, I don't understand. When would I listen to it in the house? I'm not listening to it because I'm doing other stuff in the house. I was like, when you're driving? He's like, no, when I'm driving, I'm listening to music. So I was like, look, we both are conversationalists. We both have stories to tell. If we sit next to each other, we, we become chatterboxes. And I said, It'll be great. And in the last, I would say, probably two or three months, Billy's been much more, more along the lines of like, yeah, let's do this. This is actually going to be Two great. hobbits in a pod or two hobs in a pod? Two hobs in a pod is kind of the working time. Two hobs in a pod, I kind of, it's kind of catchy. Yeah. yeah. So does that mean that we steal all your listeners? They all come oh, to us. I hope so. I hope yeah. they all, I hope they, well, I don't like <laughs> the word steal. How about uh, if they like it, they'll go visit and they'll go... Well, first of all, they're going to love you guys. They loved Dom when he came on last. And Moonlighting. If you guys are going to mm. talk about things that are interesting and talk about your lives, and what I like about today is that your relationship, it's just, it's dynamic. And the way you bounce off each other, you should have a podcast. And it's going to be fun. And I'm watching you guys so, go well, at it well, now and laugh and enjoy each other. And I think that's 90% of it. Will mm. you come on to ours then? Why, what? Will you come on to our pod? How, how did I sound? Podcast. Just now? How, what? You what, what? what? <laughs> I, will you have me? Yeah, yeah. Of course. For sure. Well, then I'm absolutely love coming that. on. Good. But just to be thankful to you for a moment, Rosie, because you're kind of my podcast mentor, you've created a very successful podcast. I'm still working on it. It's but still it's still, building foundation. it's still very successful. And you've, you've said to me over the years, well, if you do it, it would happen like this. And this is a way to do it. This is a way to monetize it. This is a way to gain fans. This yeah. is a way to think about how it works. So 
I do appreciate that because as Billy and I are moving towards doing this this podcast after this, it's been based on a lot of the advice where you have said, I would do it like this and think about that and stuff. So. Well, I'm learning to, by the way, accept compliments and I'm going to say thank you mm, very much. And good. I sincerely mean that mm. and I'm being present. Mm -hmm. Billy, you that's see that? That's nice. I like that. I really am. Look, I think a lot of talented people or people who are successful hang around with people that are very smart and know what they're doing and they ask advice. You know, I used to be one, I was just like, I'm just gonna do things. But when you ask people that really know how to do things, so I have people that are helping me along and I'm always looking for ways to expand, you know, grow my audience. And, uh, but I, you know, I have a meeting after this. There's so many ways to do it and it takes time. It takes dedication mm -hmm. and you have to stick with it and it's consistency and it's mm -hmm. something for me, I just found purpose in this podcast. I found like when I put these on, I could actually listen to people. I actually, I just know, I, I feel present. I feel like I wanna talk to you. I feel like I, I'm, I can't escape. I can't, I mean, I could, but I, I don't wanna get up and go watch TV or read something or play with my, I wanna sit here and talk to people that I- Wait, th you that, said play with your, d that is, that, you dog, were gonna end no, dogs, dogs, like dogs. actual dogs. Just making sure you but, just end it with dogs. But, but, the main thing that brought me on is I have always thought since meeting Dom, and that's 20 years now, there's something comic that we can do together, something funny that we haven't done yet. And whether that's a movie or a TV show or we write a script or whatever it is, I think there's an original comedy voice that I think we have missed. Mm. And I think, you know, I think the podcast might find that. Mm. And I think that's the thing that is most interesting to me. You know, whether it is the podcast or it, it becomes something, I don't know. But I do think we we have lost something. And there's been people along the way, good producers, as you say, smart people who have tried to make it happen. And for whatever reason, it hasn't. And I think there's something there, you know. Mm. And it'd be shame if one of us died before it came out. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be you. It'd be a shame for the world. Really. You made Ryan laugh. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I'm not sure where this thing will go either, but in my mind, I've always, I'm a big fan of like visualization and all that kind of stuff. And I've always seen myself with Billy doing this podcast at a convention with the energy of an audience and realizing. That's what I want to do that too. Yes, yeah. I want to get into that too. I want to go to the cons and start doing these things right. and then just set them up like, hey, Hot there's live. a guest that I'd like to interview him like, because that that's what I want to start so doing. So instead of doing a one hour Q&A, you do a one hour pod because that energy in the audience, everyone, if I, anything that I post on Instagram, people like. If I post Billy, it gets five to six times more followers and likes than I would do just posting me because everyone wants to see myself and Billy or Mary and Pippin together. Same thing, yeah. So, I, if we, I hear so you. we can be in a room. It's like you and, and Tom. Tom Welling. It's absolutely. Anytime they we, see you, they're like, "Oh my god, my childhood!" Oh. We we do these things called Smallville Nights. I came up with this idea and I pitched it to Tom and he goes, "I like it." I go, "Listen, here's why." Because Tom's private in a sense. He's like Billy. That you know, it's like I go, "What if we do these things? These intimate little nights, these improvisational nights called Smallville Nights at these cons on one night." They're not allowed to bring cameras. There's no video. There's no recording. It's just a moment with us and the fans, and we reenact shit. There's so we have so much fun. I bring a bald cap. I like, <laughs> and he's very. And Tom is just so funny and so open because he's comfortable. And, and you he's do usually this. a private person. It? We've done three of them, and That's they're great. tremendously successful. They people really. And, and by the way, I didn't want to do something where I, I'm like, I'm not just. I don't want to take someone's money. I want them to be entertained where they're like. That was worth every cent I spent. I want them to walk out going that we have prizes, we give Smallville stuff away, we we do things we'd never do. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing. So, you know, sometimes I think we look at things like uh, our past and we're like, oh, you know, I don't want people to know. You know, I was Lex Luthor, but let's talk about the present. That's it was a huge thing. The yeah. Lord of the Rings. You why, it's why, only, why not? You're only going downhill it. from Lord of the Rings. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? How Unle do, unless you, know. you go to Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, wait yeah, a wait minute. minute. Hey, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't even ask you a Star Wars question, but you're in Star Wars. Yeah, I know I that. I can't really talk about it. You can't. can't I know. Not, can. I mean, apart from being in it. You yeah. can. I can. Let I, me just ask you this. He's a Jedi. You can't even say if you're in more than one scene, huh? Um, I can. I'm in more than one scene. My character's called Blink and You'll Miss Me. That's the name of the character. Is it? I play one of those in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy too. So he's just <laughs> like that. That's what I keep telling everyone. Because it's if not... you tell people, oh, Blink and you'll miss me, then they think, Dude, oh, he's going to be- Dude, that's a song. 
I want to, Billy, can we write Blink a song? Blink and you'll together? miss me. Blink and you'll miss me. Yeah. I love it. That's Blink like a and love you'll song. Miss me. I'm the little guy. Blink and you miss me. I've got a tear in my eye. Blink, blink, and you miss me. And now I'm gone. Listen to their new podcast when it's on. Woohoo! Dude, I, I love this. This is brillant. I wish you guys the best Thanks, on your Rosie. journey. Um, thank you, Billy, for allowing me thank to be inside you. you. Yeah, what a thank treat, you. man. What a treat. So I'm going to allow you guys to stay in this room with Ryan, and now you're going to record. It's kind of, it's cool. It's like George Lucas writing Star Wars. Yeah. I think we should switch seats. I should probably sit where you are, or you sit where yeah. Rosie is. Yeah, someone sit here, you sit there. I'm quite comfortable. You guys, thanks for listening. I hope that uh, was as enjoyable for you as it was for Ryan and I. We, uh, we love those guys. They were a lot of fun to listen to. They have so many stories and so many more stories to come, as you could only imagine. Just uh, so make sure you, uh, whatever they do, you follow, you listen, you spread the word for them. And um, big shout out to my uh, top peer patrons, uh, newbies, Scott B. Thank you, Raj C. We got Chris, Jason D, Mark, a.k.a. Crutch. Allison L and Kristen K. I wonder if Kristen K is Kristen Crook. No. Uh -huh. hey, I can't say her last name. She'll uh -huh. probably get mad, but it's Kristen K. Uh, the OGs here on Patreon. Thank you, Jason W, Dion K, Vortex, Robert B, Bobby, Emily, Kevin R, Jerry W. My grandma's. Hold on. Here's my grandma. Blanche? Yes, honey. Hey, I'm doing my podcast right now. Could I call you a little later? I'll be home all night. Are you doing all right? Yes. Yeah? Have you won any money playing Marjan or anything? I won $2 today. $2? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Go ahead and call me back. Hey, I love you. Love you. Did you get anything from me? I did. I got gorgeous flowers. You're gonna go broke sending me flowers. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna be broke and happy because uh, I love you and I want to give you some flowers. Well, you make me very happy, and I love you so much. All right, you're the best. I'll talk to you a little later. Okay, darling. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Oh, I love that woman. Oh, well, that was an interesting guest. A little visit from Blanche. That was really nice. Right. I'm gonna call my grandma later. <laughs> yeah, you should, man. I, I love her. Uh, where was I? Thank you to Barry L. Nico P. Lauren G, Emma H, Jill E, Yukiko. I love my Yukiko. Sarah V, Trisha, Lee S, Nancy D. Nancy D. <laughs> that just sounds provocative, doesn't it? It could be Nancy Drew. It could be Nancy Drew or just Nancy Or D. just Nancy D. Uh, honestly, without you guys, I mean, your support on Patreon is huge and it helps pay for guys like Ryan and Mia and Bryce and all the costs of cameras and things like that. It just, it really helps and your subscription is not overlooked and it is, uh, it's honestly awesome and um, continue to help me spread the word about the show and let's grow it together. Um, I remember I'm going to be in Richmond and Mexico coming up. Why don't we play a song from Left on Laurel? Why not? Uh, let's play, uh, this is Little Boy from Left on Laurel. You can still listen to the album for free. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you, especially Nancy D. Jesus. All right, guys. Uh, I love you. Thank you for listening, and, and thanks for the support. Come